As promised last week, we were going to come out with one ground reference maneuver every week, and today we're going to tackle the turn around a point, again to check right standards. Let's get right to it. As explained in the rectangular course video, the vision of attention should be your key focus and what the examiner will be looking for rather than perfection. The maneuver should be performed within the guidelines of the practical test standards and the airplane flying handbook. And again, you can find links to both of them in the description of the video. The PTS states that the applicant must exhibit knowledge of the elements related to turns around a point, select a suitable ground reference point, plan the maneuver so as to enter left or right at a 600 to 1000 feet AGL, an appropriate distance from the reference point. Apply adequate wind drift correction to track a constant radius turn around the selected reference point. Divide the tension between airplane control and ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintain altitude plus minus 100 feet. Maintain airspeed plus minus 10 knots. Like for the rectangular course video, before we get into the actual maneuver, let's discuss common errors students make during the maneuver and even before they start the maneuver. 1. Not accomplishing clearing turns. 2. Forgetting to do the pre-maneuver checklist. 3. Picking a suitable area for the maneuver. 4. Starting at the wrong altitude. And finally banking more than 45 degrees. First of all, before starting any task you should always accomplish your clearing turns and don't ask the examiner if you should. The examiner is just a passenger. Start with a 90 degree left turn followed by a 90 degree right turn. You should always start to the left because of overtaking aircraft, which is always going to overtake on your right side. If you turn to the right, you go into its course. Also, before starting a task, it is fundamental to do the pre-maneuver checklist. Again, without asking the examiner. Depending on the airplane you're flying, this can be fairly simple to quite complicated. In general, you should take a peek at the cruise checklist and see that everything is set correctly. For example, that your mixture is set to full rich and the carburetor heat is off or on if the conditions require it. When you pick your reference point, it is clear and obvious that you should pick something that is going to make the maneuver easy to accomplish. But what is not so obvious is that the examiner will probably pull the throttle on you during this maneuver or any of the other ground reference maneuvers to simulate an engine out. So it is fundamental to choose an area with a nice emergency field close by and also to keep that in sight and remain in a position where you can make it back to it if and when the examiner simulates the engine failure. Not picking an emergency field? Well, guarantee the examiner will pull the engine on you and failure of the check ride at this point is inevitable. The best altitude for these maneuvers is 7 to 800 feet as it will give you some wiggle room. The PTS gives you plus minus 100 feet. If you pick a thousand feet, you would only have plus zero and minus 100 as the PTS again states that you should accomplish this maneuver between 500 and 1000 feet. No higher than a thousand feet. Too close to 500 will give you less time and distance in an engine out, and the higher you go, the harder it is to actually accomplish the maneuver. Finally, during the ground reference maneuvers, it is very important not to exceed a bank of 45 degrees, as that is considered a high performance maneuver, and for those maneuvers, the PTS again states that you should be above 1500 feet. If you're forced to bank more than 45 degrees, it is either because the wind is too strong, and this is doubtful, as you would probably not have initiated the check ride with those winds. Not only will the entire check ride be incredibly difficult, but the examiner could also fail you right off the bat for bad aeronautical decision making. The other reason could be that you are too far away from the reference point. The airplane flying handbook does not specify at what distance you should be from the point, so it's really your decision. Keep in mind though that if you're flying a high wing airplane, if you are too far from the reference point, the wing could obscure it if you're forced to bank too much to keep the correct track. The best thing to do is to practice the maneuver over and over again in various winds to figure out the best distance to do this maneuver at. And now, let's tackle the maneuver itself. So how do we correctly accomplish this task? The maneuver itself is fairly easy. You are, after all, just doing a circle. And as usual, the first thing you need to do is figure out where the wind is coming from. The easiest way to do this is to look for some smoke, whether from a fire, a smokestack, or some other feature. 
In the absence of smoke, you can align yourself with the road while navigating to the field and notice the drift. Keep in mind that if your practice area is close to the airport of departure, the wind is probably going to be the same. Once you are fairly certain of the direction of the wind, you will want to enter the maneuver on the downwind. Remember that all the maneuvers should be initiated to the left because of the increased safety factor. And again, you should mention this to the examiner, saying that even though you already cleared the area, being too safe is never a bad idea. And in the case of turns around a point, it's actually even easier because the reference will be directly off your window rather than having to see through the examiner's window. Now, if you do not correct for the wind, this is what our maneuver would look like. The animation is showing that the airplane is drifting in the direction of the wind, which is blowing it obviously all over the place. And this would not be acceptable and the maneuver would be considered a failed task. Because we are entering the maneuver on a downwind, the initial bank will need to be the steepest because the wind is pushing you down. Let's say around 40 degrees. Again, do not exceed 45 degrees. And the bank will keep decreasing until we get to the 180 degree point, where the bank will be the shallowest, let's say around 20 degrees. At this point, the bank will start increasing again, until the steepest bank is reached again at the beginning point. So, assuming the initial bank was around 40 degrees to start with, at the 90 degree point, you should be around 30 degrees. At the 180 degree point, around 20 degrees, and back to 30 degrees at 270 degree point. Keep dividing your attention between inside and outside the cockpit to avoid busting your plus minus 100 feet in altitude and your speed. And that's just it. Rinse and repeat. You will want to repeat the track at least once unless the examiner tells you otherwise. After the completion of the second track, exit the maneuver again on the downwind to proceed to your next task. And again, this also is a fairly simple maneuver, turns around a point is not that complicated. Next week we're going to tackle the most complicated one of all, S-turns. In the meantime, if you want more tips on passing the check ride, keep in mind that we don't just offer the knowledge test prep software, which helps you ace the written test. We also have the check ride prep software, a three hour prep that will bring you through every possible scenario the examiner could present you with. This latest software of ours will give you the confidence you need to guarantee you will pass your practical test on the first try. If you still need to pass also your knowledge test, then you might be interested in the all-in-one package, which will give you access to the knowledge test software for PC and Mac, it will also give you access to the online software for iPad and Android, and it will also give you access to the online testing software. But best of all, it gives you access to the checkride prep software absolutely free. Visit PassFAExams.com and see how we make pilot test taking fun and easy. Until next time, we at Pilot Training Solutions wish you all happy flying and blue skies.